Well, you may remember it was last week that we told you about plans uh, to hand out some 4,200 joints over Inauguration Weekend. Yeah, now we're sitting down with some of the people behind the plan who say this isn't just about a headline or getting high. For patients, they say this is no joking matter for them. WUSA 9's Evan Koslov joins us now in the studio. And Evan, you have some emotional interviews with some of these patients. Right, good morning. I sat down with two of those patients who say they owe their life to cannabis and now they just want to make sure that their message doesn't get lost. I have days where I literally tippy toe through my house because I can't move. My connective tissues are very weak and thin and fragile, I'm prone to easy dislocations. My vascular system is very fragile. Two patients with very different illnesses, but one main similarity. They both say that marijuana changed their lives. Take Rachel Ramon Donlin. She suffers from a rare genetic condition called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Cannabis helped me to get through the trauma, the anxiety, the fear, the stress, and the pain. I wouldn't say that I got up out of a wheelchair and started walking because of pot, but I don't know if I would have been able to go through those treatments without it. That's why Donlin says this upcoming event over Inauguration Weekend is so important. She wants to make sure that the recent legalization here in D.C. remains intact. Even if he says that he's going to uphold the state's rights, do you see not being a state? It's kind of like under federal law. What's going to happen here in D.C. with legalization? It's not a laughing matter at all. It's a concern shared by Sandra Battle. She was attacked by her ex-husband two decades ago. It left her severely injured. She now suffers from fibromyalgia. What we're doing is getting attention. What we're trying to do is get the attention of those in power to help them to understand how important this is for us. All right, so obviously there are two sides to every story. They know that, but these advocates tell me they just want to make sure that those in power are at least hearing what they have to say about their illnesses. Guys.